done fell in love with your eyes. I done fell in love, love. I done fell in love with your eyes. I done fell in love with your eyes. What's up, you guys? Welcome to my channel. My name is Key Ever, but I go by Keeks. Keeks on me, Keeks with the cheeks, Kiwi, whichever one is following me. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys what I learned from Eric and Tay's masterclass. And I'm going to just discuss everything that was discussed in class, everything that was not discussed in class, and what I learned. So, we're going to get right into it. So, um, we did not go over bleaching, bleaching the knots in the master class we're just gonna get into the plucking I, I personally like to use my hot comb and comb everything back just so i can see the areas that need some work and as you guys can see this is a very dense frontal um this hairline does not match mine whatsoever so i'm basically going to be using some slanted tweezers and i'm just going to be plucking where i see fit we start off by taking out the perimeter you always going to do this because you don't want it to be like too bald in the front so just preserve those hairs because those are normally the baby hairs anyway. Just be mindful that the more you pluck, um, the more natural it looks, the more likely it is to bald faster. That's my only thing with plucking. I like to pluck until it's a little bit natural, but I don't like to go too natural because I know that it'll bald soon. So I like to leave a little bit of fullness in there, but just keep, it's, it's personal preference, but just keep that in mind. So. In the video, Tay mentioned that he uses a white towel, and I think that's a very good tip because the white canvas lets you see everything that, you know, dark clothes or even your skin complexion doesn't show. So, always be sure to use, like, a white canvas and be on a flat surface when you are plucking so that you can see everything clearly. So at this point, I'm brushing in the hairs that we excluded. I'm just going to brush these in and then I'm going to begin plucking that hairline just so everything can be seamless and then also just try to mimic my natural hairline as much as possible because mine does not look nothing like that. So. So at this point, the hairline is looking a bit more doable. As you guys can see, like plucking is not like a two minute thing. It takes a while to get a good hairline. So I just want you guys to be patient with the plucking process because it can be very tedious, but the end results are always good. So just take your time with this. Try not to pluck too heavy handedly. Always pluck on an angle and then just focus on the areas that you feel personally are just too dense for your liking and just yeah just focus on those areas and after a while you will start to see that the hairline starts to become more to your preference and at that point that's when you would just move on to the next step so i won't do the other side on camera but i do want to show you guys the difference um this is the side that i plucked clearly i could do more plucking but that was good enough for me and then that's the side that's unplucked and when you're satisfied with both sides you're just going to move on 
So getting into the install, we're gonna start off with some Gatsby gel and I'm just slicking my edges back. You wanna be sure to use small amounts of this product so that it doesn't interfere with the adhesive that you're gonna be using later on to install your wig. Um, so yeah, I'm just using this gel, I'm gonna slick it back and then I'm gonna use my blow dryer to make sure all of the hairs are out the way for when I get ready to apply the cap. Okay, so we're going to be using a nude mesh cap. Tay really stressed that when you're putting these caps on, you need to stretch it so that you're able to see your hairline. And honestly, I'm going to put y'all on game real quick. If I want a really like seamless ball cap method, I use sheer tights personally. And you can pick those up at your local Walgreens or your beauty supply. Try those out and let me know like if you see the difference because there's a big difference. This step is optional, but you can use the adhesive skin guard, which is from Erica J. Um, I always use her products. I like the skin guard because it's one, it's a prep for your adhesive, and then also it's a protector for your skin. It acts as a barrier for any oils um, that you may have while wearing wigs. And then it also acts as a barrier for like sensitive skin. So in case any event that you do like have breakouts or anything from adhesive, I will always go in with um, a skin guard. So, Okay, so we're gonna apply one layer of the Hold Me Down adhesive. In the video, Tay uses the Watermelon Kind that Erica J carries. I don't really know the difference between the two because I don't have that particular product, but I do know that the Hold Me Down Adhesive has one of the strongest holds that I've ever experienced in my wig making years. I'm not even sure if it's a big difference. I just know that that one is scented. But um, if you guys are looking for a really good adhesive with a strong hold, then go ahead and check out her products. I'll leave her links in the description box. Once the adhesive dries, you're going to take um, some foundation or concealer of your choice, something that is really close in complexion to your skin, and you're going to apply a very light layer. Take stress that it needs to be very light because if you kick on these products, it could definitely interfere with how the how the adhesive cures and how it melts into your skin. So just go ahead and go in with light strokes, but make sure that the concealer or the foundation whichever one you choose that it's close to your complexion because it's supposed to be a ball cap you're not supposed to really see it after you apply this product so okay so when you're cutting this cap make sure you have some really sharp scissors so that you won't be making like the little fuzzy balls and stuff when you're cutting it otherwise you go in with a razor that's what I ended up having to do. Um, but yeah, you just want to cut up until where your glue, where you laid the glue. That's pretty much your guide. So just cut as close as you can to there. And then any extra fuzzies that you have, be sure to cut those off. Paving this city crank. Okay, so in the video, Tay made a very valid point. Them little combs that they install into, into them wigs, they really do be making the wigs a little bulky depending on how your wig fits you. Um, so they really not that necessary unless you actually use those and you're sticking them into your braids. But if you don't use those, just be sure to cut them off. Otherwise, it'll have your wig all bumpy and lumpy. And also be sure to cut the lace in the back. So we're just going to get into installing. Tay cuts his lace before he installs it, y'all. So what he did was he cut the lace, but he also left a little bit of extra lace. Um, I'll tell you guys why he did that later because you're going to need that extra lace. So be sure to cut the lace, but don't cut it too close to the hairline because you're going to need that extra lace for when you're installing it later on. <laughs> I was steady saying later, like y'all not about to see it in two seconds. But <laughs> moving on, um, you want to take the same foundation or concealer that you used on your cap and you're going to apply that on the inside of your lace and then you're also going to apply it on the top part of the lace. Okay. 
Okay, we're getting into the fun part, y'all. So, look at look at look at it. Look at it, y'all. That look like my skin. It ain't even on there yet. Stop playing. <laughs> okay, I was very happy because like, yeah. Anyways, we're about to start applying the adhesive. So, Tay does not. He did not apply the glue from one ear to the other, y'all. Oh, before I do that, I'm gonna put my um, I'm gonna clean the surface again with the alcohol, and then I'm gonna put the skin guard down. I told y'all the skin guard acts as a barrier um, for the oils and those who may have sensitive skins and experience reactions with the adhesive. Use skin guard. But um, yeah. So Tay doesn't he doesn't apply his wigs from ear to ear at one time. He does one side at a time. So right now, what we're gonna do is apply your layers of adhesive. Um, they recommend you do three to four if you're like a very active person and then you can go up to seven layers with this adhesive according to Erica J. So I think I ended up doing three layers. And here's the kicker y'all. I was doing this wrong the entire time. I did not know that you could apply the adhesive back to back. So before I took this class, I was definitely applying like a layer of adhesive. I was letting it dry completely and then I went in with my second and third layer. No, you don't do that guys because when you do that, you gave that glue all that time to dry. So by the time you actually get to like your third and final layer or whatever layer you're on, the glue didn't dry to the point where it's no longer going to stick. So make sure you're actively applying these layers. You could go in, I mean you could wait until it gets a little clear, but make sure you're applying it back to back so that it all dries at the same time. And then once it gets to a like a, a, a tacky consistency, that's when you're going to go ahead and you're going to apply the rest. Okay, so something I noticed when Tay sticks the glue down, basically every single hair that you want to be in this glue, it needs to go down right here and right now. So make sure wherever you lay the glue, that's where you're going to be positioning your hair. Not put, positioning the hair a little bit forward, none of that. You need to make sure that all of the hairs that you want to keep is intact with the glue right here. This kind of basically helps with um, speeding the process of installing the wig up. Because normally, like, we'll go in and we'll, like, apply the lace and then we'll go back and we'll go over the parts that didn't have the glue. No, you don't want to do that. So, what Tate suggests to do is leave that little extra space. But you see that lace right there? He left all of that lace right there. But all the lace that's not adhered to the glue right now, all of that is being cut off. Ain't that crazy, y'all? We, 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 we be doing too much. We making it hard for ourselves at this point. Basically, all we had to do was make sure everything was laid in place so we don't even have to go back and apply glue anymore. But it'll get better with practice because I still ended up having to go back and put the glue where I needed it to go. But that's just something that um, he really stressed up in the video so make sure when you are applying this wherever wherever your hair is laying that's where it's gonna be laying because once you get to cutting that extra lace everything else is coming with it you know so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side remember not to let all of the glue dry in between you applying your layers make sure that you are actively applying these layers back to back so that it all dries pretty much at the same time and you get that little tacky consistency before you place the lace down and then you guys will see all of the extra spaces that you know don't have any glue on there all of that is getting cut off
so right here you guys see all of that excess lace that's being cut off but as you guys can see some of my baby hairs are still not adhered to the glue which is why I went back in there and I applied the glue some more but the, the goal is to not even have to go over your work pretty much and that just helps minimize time it helps keep you more efficient and it just keeps your work cleaner too so so now I'm applying the band. The band is basically assisting your melt. It's helping your lace melt into your skin. Um, when I apply my band, I personally like to go underneath the dryer for a good five to 10 minutes. I didn't demonstrate it in this video because I was already like, everything was already set up and I wasn't trying to get up. So I just used the blow dryer and I just, you know, blow dry it over the band from ear to ear. Oh yeah, the hair is from Super B Wigs. This is their 13 by six Body Wave 99J. This was 20 inches. It came like this, fresh out the box. Um, I think this is like a 150 density. I would say just like on a small, it's on a smaller scale in terms of the density. And then also the knots was fat as hell. And this also was a medium brown lace, y'all. And I'm saying it to say this because y'all about to see this melt. Just watch. Hold on, wait. Look at that melt on a medium brown lace. Are you kidding? Like, what? <laughs> I don't even need no baby hairs. Oh my God, thank you so much, Tay. <laughs> but no, for real, this is on a medium brown lace, y'all. And I was very shocked because ideally for you to get the best results, you need to use an HD lace or a transparent lace. But yeah, um, in the video, he didn't really like discuss that much. He didn't go into depth like the different types of lace. I will do a demonstration on that because I already plan to do a video like that. But in the words of Tay, HD lace, transparent lace, even a little bit of Swiss lace because Swiss and HD are like kind of one and the same. And then if you absolutely just has the last resort, go with a medium brown lace. And you guys can see in this video, the medium brown lace is doing me a little bit of justice. So moving on to why I took the class in the first place, baby, the baby hairs. Y'all, this freaking tip he shared with us is about to change y'all life literally. Like, oh my God, I was, my mouth was on the floor after he showed us this, y'all. But, so basically, um, the baby hairs. The deal with the baby hairs, thinner the hair and the shorter, the more natural. The thicker and the longer, the more, you know, dramatic it's going to be. So basically, whatever your preference is, go ahead and pick out your pieces of baby hairs. And what you want to do is, for each baby hair, you need to pull it out and you need to hot comb it towards the front. So basically, you train the hair to come forward. So make sure you guys do this step, it's very important. After you do that, you're going to cut your baby hairs to whatever length you desire. And then we're going to get into the parts that shook me, baby. Because I was just like, oh my God, I've been struggling all this freaking time up until now. Y'all, so the key to getting the, the arrogant tape baby hairs, you just have to curl the baby hairs. That sounds so simple, but just think about how important that is. If you curl the baby hairs, and then also go ahead and use like a small flat iron. Don't use that curling iron like I did because I burned myself a couple times. But if you curl the baby hairs, y'all, basically, you pretty much training it to go in the swoop direction. If you think about the logistics of doing a baby hair, let's get real technical. We're basically forming a C. What you think a curl pattern is? It's either a C or an S. So, if you curl it, you basically just set your baby hairs in place already. Only thing you doing is just, you know, finishing the work. Y'all, when I tell you that shit shook me, oh, I was just so thankful. I, I would I would, I would thank him like a thousand times if I have to. Y'all, it's such a small, 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 small detail, but it makes a big ass difference. Oh my God, y'all. I really hope they help y'all out. And then honestly, like this whole entire install, y'all saw it was the basics, but it was just the little things that really took it over the top. So like, oh, I fucking love taping this. He was really goaded for sharing that little tip with us. If you knew about this tip, let me know. Cause why the fuck you ain't tell nobody else? But that is I know, y'all know. So make sure you curl the baby hairs. This time I did it without cutting it first. So you guys will see. I actually curled it and then you guys will see like because of that curl the baby hairs are just gonna be laid honey yeah don't forget don't forget to hot comb it first hot comb it for it first train it a little bit and then finish it up y'all I was floored after that I, I, I I'm so much more confident doing my baby hairs I can't even talk <laughs> like, I was so excited I was so excited to do this and that shit worked it worked out a lot 
But yeah, um, after that, we're just gonna get into like the final, the final part is install, which is nothing too crazy. So. Okay, so moving on to the party. My part was already pre-plucked, but basically in the video, Tay plucks the part, you know, like you would normally pluck it, not too big because you don't want to have no motherfucking wide ass part, and that's just gonna look very unrealistic. And then he goes in with a die, a die stick. I'll try to include a picture. And basically, you know how some people, you take that little spray and you put the comb down the middle and you spray over the part so that it creates this crisp line? Basically, Tay uses this dye stick. It does the exact same thing, but it gives a more natural appearance. So you're basically touching it up yourself as opposed to spraying that really harsh line. And that was very helpful too. Um, and then after that, he just pretty much hot combed the top. But I personally like to go into sections. This is my personal little tip right here, y'all. He ain't do this in the video. I'm doing it, okay? I'm showing y'all. <laughs> um, go in each section, use a wax stick. And then he also uses like a finishing spray. I use the Erica J. Holden spray for this part. But just go in with your hot comb. Um, use a finishing spray. I don't know which one he used. I'll try to find it and link it down below for y'all. And then, yeah, just hot comb it. And you're going to have yourself a really cute ass install. Y'all, I really hope this video helped y'all. I really do. If this video helped y'all in any way, please let me know in the comments. Um, I really did this video for those who like couldn't take the class but really wanted to take the class. I don't really mind sharing the information. Hopefully, I don't get in trouble for it. But yeah, if this helps you in any way, please let me know. If you know this could help someone, please share it with other people. Each one teach one. We all need to be out here slaying these laces, baby, because look. All of these little small little tidbits that we've been missing out on. All of these little small gems. Look at how this... Man... I can't wait. I can't wait to continue to work on this and improve. Yeah, the class was well worth the $500. A lot of people was just, it was a very controversial subject, but it was worth it. I learned a lot, and that's why I'm here helping you guys out. If he has another class, I definitely will do it again. It's never nothing you can't learn. That's what I learned from this class. Like, baby, those small instances, he's basically... This class really taught me that I was doing everything right and I was well on my way to mastering the lace. It's the execution behind it because honestly, everybody has been doing wig installs. But those little tidbits, like I told y'all, the little gems he shared with us, man, over the top installs. I really fuck with Tay for that. I appreciate the class. That's all there is to this video. I'm just doing my, you know, the little bit of my last little customization. hair some super big wigs super cute wig i just wish it was a little bit fuller so that's why i am going in and um using my razor to create some layers try to get a little bit more body up in this motherfucker but if you are into you know the natural look this was i needed voluminous i needed to be that bitch okay it's the it's the color for me this wig was good and compared to all of the other colored wigs i had this wig was great i didn't really receive no shedding other than the um the hair that came out from plucking i really didn't receive any type of shading or anything like that but of course i will keep you guys updated if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button comment down below what you thought again and then subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications so that you're aware of when i post and as always i'll see you guys in my next one bye, bye.